Shalom Israel Most High in Christ Blessed. Back at it again with something else that they don't want to talk about. And this is um, an article on Al Jazeera. They're pretty good at keeping up with stuff in like the Middle East and like Africa and stuff that uh, mainstream media just doesn't want to talk about in general. This article is called uh, Iran Accuses Great Satan U.S. of Inciting Chaos and Terror. All right, so I'm going to start off right here. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi accused United States President Joe Biden of inciting chaos after he expressed support for demonstrations against the death of Masa Amini, a woman who died in Iranian government custody nearly a month ago. Right, so protests have flared up since this woman died about a month ago. The protests started in mid-September after Amini, 22, died following three days in the custody of Iran's morality police for allegedly violating the strict dress code for women. So I, I started reading this and I was like, huh, what is the Iranian dress code for women? So I'll put up this other article right here. What's the name of this article? Uh, it's named um, Masa Amini, woman, uh, colon, woman dies after arrest by Iran's morality police. Now, some people say, as far as Iran, Iran says, their morality police says that she died, she just died from heart complications in custody. Other people say that the morality police killed her. Uh, I don't know, so I'm not going to speak on that. Um, regardless, I'm not going to sit here and say that... Uh, Iran is like um, all righteous and the, the U.S. is, or the protesters rather, are, are all evil because it's probably a bit of a gray area. It's not like they're um, super Christian with their ideas. They're not very Christ-like of their ideas of uh, killing people uh, for their sins, right? That's not a, a, a Christ-like approach to doing it, especially here in the uh, New, New Testament. Starting with this paragraph here. The mandatory dress code, which applies to all nationalities and religions, not just Iranian Muslims, requires women to conceal their hair and neck with a headscarf and wear a loose tunic or coat over their clothes. Right? So, this is somewhat biblical. Alright, so I'm going to get the scriptures on this about the strict dress code for women, according to God. This isn't according to Iran. Or uh, any other nation, but according to God. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So anything that is man's clothes, especially pants, women are not allowed to wear that. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So it's not just a strict dress code for women. It's a strict dress code for men as well. You ain't supposed to wear dresses. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. You see that right there? Everybody who breaks the dress code... Anybody who cross-dresses is an abomination unto the Lord. Now you got those like drag queen type stuff. That's abomination to God. All right. Women in pants, even though it's so commonplace here in uh, you, the U.S. and the West in general, is an abomination to God. So that's part of it. Women wearing dresses. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11. And I'm going to start with verse uh, 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So that's the order. Father, son, man, woman. That's the order, all right? Every man praying or prophesying with his head covered dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesying with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven, right? For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Right? So it would be a dishonor to a woman if you just walked up to her and shaved her head. Right? So it's the same way if she does not wear a head covering. That's how dishonorable that thing is. All right? The same way if a man has his head covered while praying or prophesying. Right? He's wearing a hat or he's wearing like a... a like what what well, they wear beanies now they they wear the, uh all sorts of bandanas or whatever that's dishonorable to god right um it didn't say specifically head and neck it just said head covering or it didn't even say uh specifically hair right you don't necessarily have to cover all your hair or your neck like what they do over there but you do have to have your head covered right so that's part of it that's part of the strict dress code according to god 
This is of 1 Timothy 2 and 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So it isn't just like tight skirts, right? It's modest. With shamefacedness and sobriety. Right? All the women out here getting high and drunk these days, that's not godly. Not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Right? So it's not about the outward appearance. It's about the inward person. Okay? So that's the strict dress code according to God. Apparently, Masa Amini was uh, violating that code according to Iran and their government. But, of course, um, the quote-unquote Western ideals have sparked these protests. The remarks of the American president who is inciting chaos and terror and the destruction of another country serve as a reminder of the eternal words of the founder of the Islamic Republic who called America the great Satan, Raisi right? said, referring to the late Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. Right, so America the great Satan. Is that biblical? Let's check it out. Here in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and I'm going to get right to the point. Verse 9. And the great dragon, if you know anything about this chapter, you know that the great dragon is referring to European colonial powers. All right. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. All right. So God's letting you know something here. The spirit that was within these colonial powers, these colonial, uh, these European nations and peoples is the same spirit that was in the garden that deceived Eve, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. His messengers were also cast out, right? So that's talking about the fall of these uh, kingdoms, these empires, these nations. Let's get some more on this. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 17, and verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great. So this is talking about America right here. Babylon the Great. And it's a mystery because obviously it don't go by the name of Babylon. They ain't out here telling people that this is Babylon. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. See, it's a mystery because America comes preaching peace. They come preaching democracy. They say, oh, your country would be so much better off with democracy. Oh, your country would be so much better off with equality. Meanwhile, they're raping you for your resources. Right? Meanwhile, they are uh, imposing sanctions on these nations, going to war with every nation. It's Babylon. And it's the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth with their philosophies and doctrines of sin all right so calling it the great satan is not that far off all right the enemy's plot must be countered by effective measures to resolve people's problems right he said according to a statement from the president's office so ibrahim raisi is not that far off that's why the u.s hates him because he's speaking the truth about the u.s the u.s hates iran our uh shemitic Brothers over there. That's Elam and uh, and Ishmael. Dozens of people have died in the protests. Most have been protesters, but members of the security forces have also died. Hundreds of demonstrators have been arrested, right? Because they don't have freedom of speech over there. It ain't like over here where you can protest and get away with it. They shut you down for protest. On Friday, Biden said, we stand with the citizens, the brave women of Iran. See, he makes it sound so great. Oh, the, all the brave women over there that are designed to wear pants and, and, and go without the head coverings. Oh, we, we stand with those brave women. It stunned me what it awakened in Iran, the U.S. president said. It awakened something that I don't think will be quieted for a long, long time. He said, oh, Iran's so evil. Oh, they want their women to, uh, to wear dresses and head coverings. Oh, they're so evil. Iranian Foreign Affairs spokesman Nasser Kanani said on Sunday, Iran is too strong for its will to be swayed by the interference of a politician. Tired of years of failure. failure. Um, so he's saying, hey, Biden's too old to, to spark something here that doesn't, uh, that doesn't need to be here. We will together defend the independence of Iran. He said, we're not bowing to America. 
And if you saw my OPEC video, you know what I'm talking about. They had these sanctions upon them um, because they will not bow to America. Kanani wrote on Instagram. The U.S. issued new sanctions against Iranian officials on October 6th over what it called the violent suppression of protests, right? So the U.S. using these sanctions, that's what the scripture goes into with the mark of the beast. You can't buy or sell unless you accept America. The U.S. Treasury last month also placed sanctions on the morality police. Raisi accused the United States of starting unrest in the past, saying because of the failure of American, because of the failure of America in militarization and sanctions, Washington and its allies have resorted to the failed policy of destabilization. So, Ibrahim Raisi already knows the tactics of the U.S. Now, the U.S. Um, sparked a revolution in Iran not too long ago. It's, it's been like a few decades at this point, but they already know because they've been there. They know the history of what America has done. The CIA has been doing this all over the world, right? The uh, the destabilization. They'll go into a country and either plant some, um, some rebels to start a revolution or they will just teach some of the people there some of the Western ideals and say, hey, go ahead and start this revolution, right? Start this coup. And because the U.S. has uh, failed to take over the uh, Iran militarily and uh, to shut it down economically through the sanctions, they're saying oh, uh, Raisi has accused the U.S. of, of, of going in there uh, to destabilize the government, right? So uh, that's it on that one. But the reason why I brought this out is because all this is prophecy. It's all prophecy. The U.S. Um, going to uh, these great lengths to create enemies over in the East is leading to something. It's culminating in something. We're about to read about it. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, verse 28. Behold, a horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the East. So Ezra is about to describe prophecy that's going to happen in the East. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots. So the nations of the dragons of Arabia is anywhere that Ishmael's at, right? So it's all the Middle Eastern nations like Saudi Arabia. You got the UAE. You got uh, Syria, Jordan, uh, Palestinian area. You got um, Iraq, Iran, Turkey, um, everything that's on the Arabian Peninsula. And even past Iran over there like Kazakhstan, Pakistan, Afghanistan, all that. The nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. So, what that's going into is the different um, Islamic terrorist attacks that happened all over the world. We've seen them happen in the U.S. with 9-11. We've seen them happen in France. We've seen them happen in the U.K. They've happened even in places like South America. All over the world, these Islamic terrorist attacks. Also, the Carmanians. Carmanians is another word for Iranians. Raging and wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood, and with great power shall they come and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. So, Iran is going to go to war with Iraq. And they're constantly at war. Right? So this could have already happened. And shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. So Iran's going to get the upper hand in Iraq. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, the Arabians, remembering their nature. And their nature is that of a wild man, as it says in Genesis 16, like what I read about OPEC last week. And if they shall turn themselves conspiring together in great power and persecute them, so turn themselves conspiring together, that's where you get stuff like ISIS and ISIL at, one Islamic state. That's what they're trying to do. That's what, if they succeed in that venture, and the prophecy is they will, then these shall be troubled. And keep silence through their power and flee. So they will be able to drive the Iranians out of Iraq. And from the land of the Assyrians shall the enemy besiege them and consume some of them. And in their hosts shall be fear and dread and strife among their kings. Behold, clouds from the east and from the north unto the south. And they are very horrible to look, look upon full of wrath and storm. So that's telling you right there that nukes are going to go off in the Middle East first. That's where it's going to start. All right. They shall smite upon no, they shall smite one upon another and they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth. So that would be your satellites, all the satellites coming down, even their own stars. So even 
their own country's satellite they're going to be knocking down. All right, and it's going to fall down to the earth. And blood shall be from sword from the sword unto the belly. All right? So blood's going to be all over the place. And the dung of man unto the camel's hoe. And see that's from uh the dung of man is talking about cuz there's a, a saying that the last thing you do when you die is you defecate yourself, right? That's what that's going into. And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon the earth. And they that see the wrath shall be afraid, and trembling shall come upon them. And this is verse 38, here's the point. And then shall there come great storms from the south and from the north and another part from the west. So this is talking about all the different militaries gathering together over there in the Middle East. And strong winds shall arise from the east and shall open it. And the cloud which he raised up in wrath and the stars stirred to cause fear toward the east and the west wind shall be destroyed. So this is going into all the different nations going into the valley of Jehoshaphat as we're about to read here. The valley of Megiddo, Armageddon. That's what it's all leading to. That's what it's all leading to. This is Joel 3 verse 1 and 2. For behold in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem when we come out of captivity. When all 12 tribes come out of captivity, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And when it's talking about pleading with them for the people of Israel, God ain't going to come down and talk to him. He said with his sword, he's going to plead with all flesh. All right. That's what it's leading to. God said, I'm pissed off that they done sent my people into captivity and that they parted my land. And that's what you see today. Israel has been parted like three, four different ways between the, uh, between the Israelis, uh, Jewish people and the, uh, Palestinians. All right. God said they got to pay for that. And how's he going to do that with that great and terrible day of judgment, what they call Armageddon. All right. So with that, I hope y'all learn something from this. Hope y'all glean something. And that's what it's all leading to. So with that, I'll say shalom. Most high in Christ bless.